This is Chicago Wilderness. Right in our own metropolitan area, we harbor the best remaining landscapes of our original Midwest wilderness. Many people may not be aware of how unique and precious the nature of Chicago wilderness really is and how it enriches our lives. Prairies were one of the most striking features of the Illinois landscape. Beautiful flowery meadows that stretch for miles. People wrote about them in the early days. This was, this was where Americans first encountered the wide open spaces, was right here in Illinois. Today, the tall grass prairies of the Midwest are among the rarest ecosystems in the world. Bordering these prairies are large stands of oak trees called woodlands or savannas. Here we're in a healthy oak woodland. In savannas and woodlands, there's a very rich understory of grasses and flowers and hundreds of species of butterflies and deer, squirrels, birds, and other wildlife that depend on the kind of community that an open canopy like this allows. These oak woodlands are now more endangered than the world's tropical rainforests. Within the Chicago Wilderness region were thousands of wetlands originally. They range from streams and lakes to bogs and marshes like this one. These marshes and other wetlands were important because they stored thousands of gallons of rainwater, preventing downstream flooding, ensuring wildlife habitat, and filtering water to make it clean. What's unique about the Chicago area is the amount of natural land that we have managed to preserve, thanks to the foresight and, and dedication of a whole lot of people, uh, planners like Daniel Burnham, uh, pioneers like Dwight Perkins, many, many others. We have more of this natural land in the Chicago area than exists anywhere else in the Midwest. All this beauty and enjoyment is so near and so accessible, even right in the shadow of the city skyscrapers. As settlers migrated west, they were drawn to the deep, rich soils found in the prairies, woodlands, and savannas of Chicago wilderness. Woodlands and savannas were leveled, prairies were plowed under, and marshes were drained for farms, homes, and businesses. Wetlands began to vanish, along with their natural ability to cleanse water and control flooding. I do believe that all this area has been overdeveloped, and now we're taking in water. Now, if this is an act of God, okay, fine, but you know, our houses are all full of water. Not only were wetlands lost, but great expanses of other natural habitats also became fragmented, and the numbers of plant and animal communities began to decline. For thousands of years before European settlers came to the Midwest, prairies in the Chicago area were set ablaze by lightning or by native peoples. As the area became developed, fires were suppressed and the health of our natural ecosystems declined. The natural ecosystems of the Midwest, be they wetlands or prairies or woodlands, evolved under a regime of repeated fire. The fires opened the areas up, removed dead duff, and encouraged new growth to come up. Fire is an essential management tool, and it refurbishes and restores natural areas. Along with settlers came plants like garlic mustard and European buckthorn. With no fire to control the spread of these aggressive species, these new invaders quickly choked out native plants with their dense shade. As native species declined, our prairies and woodlands began to lose their richness and diversity. If we are to have natural areas to visit and enjoy, we need to find a balance between nature and civilization. The wilderness of Chicago is a priceless heritage, uh, equivalent to the Grand Canyon, or the Redwood Forest, or the Everglades. 
Uh, there's nothing else like this anywhere. Today, Chicago Wilderness still includes scores of wondrous places to visit and enjoy, stretching from southeast Wisconsin through northeast Illinois to the Indiana Dunes. Working on behalf of our natural heritage is Chicago Wilderness, an extraordinary collaboration of more than 60 public and private organizations. Our goal is to work together to protect the natural communities of the Chicago region and restore them to long-term viability in order to enrich the quality of life of the citizens who live in the Chicago region and contribute to the preservation of global biodiversity. We also inform people about the value of natural areas and we encourage citizens of all ages to get involved. Many of the efforts of Chicago Wilderness center on restoring natural areas. Take this power right now, Mr. Right. Ray. Yeah, you can take that power. This is a buckthorn tree. It was introduced by our European settlers. It is an invasive species that tends to outcompete our native species. Therefore, we must remove it so our native species can also grow. Good job. It's a gloriously wonderful transformation of the landscape, and we participate in that. We participate in it not by imposing our idea of the landscape on it, but by reading the possibilities of the landscape, seeing what this place can be, what it has been in the past, what it can be again, and taking the actions that are needed. There's also a real selfish purpose. It gets tremendous pleasure and enjoy. Nice group of people doing something useful here. It's wonderful. Everybody should do it. I think we're, uh, we're raised in some sense, uh, spiritually even, by being able to come out to a place like this and experience uh, biodiversity. Lots of different species um, living and growing and reproducing in the ways that they've had um, for thousands of years. So I would think it's, uh, it benefits people by giving them a healthier environment, by giving them a place to go and uh, relax and, uh, and see nature. And enjoy the results of restoration, the return to the Chicago region of native wildlife. The number of sandhill cranes and great blue herons are increasing in the region dramatically, and their increase is tied directly to habitat restoration and the proper management of land. Put quite simply, for those species and thousands of others, if you build it, they will come. There are many different ways to enjoy Chicago wilderness. Canoeing is the only trail through nature that will leave no trace of your passing. Nothing but a few ripples to show that we were here and they soon disappear. You feel free, you know, it, it's, it, it just lets your mind flow, like the water flowing, the air flowing. Just, it's just very relaxing. You can get into your inner self, I think. Another way to support Chicago wilderness is by using native plants to landscape your property. You do get some people who come by and, and, and say, what are you doing with all the weeds in your front yard? And I think you have to um, explain to them that um, weeds are really just plants out of place. And if any plants deserve a place, they're, they're the native plants of Illinois in your, own, in your own yard. The Chicago wilderness is a world-class natural treasure, and it's right here in our own backyard. You can learn more about Chicago Wilderness by contacting any of the member organizations, or you can learn about Chicago Wilderness by reading about it. In the Atlas and Quarterly magazine, Chicago Wilderness illustrates the beauty of our natural areas and why biodiversity is so valuable.
For more information, call this number or visit the Chicago Wilderness website. But most importantly, come visit these beautiful places or get involved as a, as a volunteer in the, in the restoration of a native wetland, a native prairie, a native woodland. Uh, it's the most satisfying, enjoyable stuff you can do. Sometimes when I feel, when I feel um, kind of sad and stuff, I just go to the park, sit down on the flowers, be around nature, smell some of them, insects flying around me, listen to them. To me, being around nature, like being around your family. Oh, cool.